And we thank you too. We are so glad you're here, but I'm gonna ask one request already. I feel kind of lonely up here. These guys are doing, but if you guys wouldn't just mind to stand up, we need a little exercise on this crazy day anyway. So this next one, especially if you wouldn't mind to stand up and just come up a little bit closer so we can have a little bit of togetherness tonight. I'd really appreciate, or today, I'd really appreciate it. Um, thank you, thank you. Oh, that's so nice. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. So very kind of you. Mr. Jordan, it looks like I'm missing a clicker. <laughs> Somehow that didn't work. I don't know. While he's getting that, I am not known for my storytelling. <laughs> But I've been praying to ask God to help me tell you this story because I heard it and I think it's going to help me express to you kind of what we feel the mission of Night to Shine is all about. So I listen to podcasts sometimes and the other day I was driving along and um, I heard a story told that went something like this. A man went into um, Best Buy and he saw a one of those, um, thank you very much, he saw one of those... Uh, yeah, my fault. <laughs> he saw one of those, um, you know, kind of flopsy, flimsy um, phone covers that's marked $4,000. Kind of high. <laughs> and then he went a little bit farther in the store and he saw a laptop marked a buck. Something kind of funky going on. But then, you know, he's like, okay, a little swap thing may be going on here. And his little mind just got to work, and he's like, well, I wonder if this would really work. So he got the tag for the laptop marked a dollar, took it to the checkout line. It rang up just fine. Got the laptop, walked out the door, and he's hearing all this buzz, and, and people are saying, man, that, that, that phone cover, that $4,000 phone cover, I'm, I'm really wanting it. I'm really saving up for it. It's, it's awesome. I am loving it, but man, I, I'm really wanting it. I, you know, I'm, I'm working for it. I'm really wanting it, but I'm not quite there yet, but it's all the buzz, you know, and all that. Um, he's like, wait, what? What is going on? What, what in the world are they talking about? This flimsy little thing, 4,000 bucks, what are they talking about? And he's like, isn't that kind of what we do all the time? We kind of put value so much value on something that isn't worth anything, <laughs> and yet we don't put value on something that's really worth so much more. And he said, that's what Jesus really tried to teach us. Jesus taught the upside down kingdom. Jesus said, what's most valuable to me, the world says isn't worth anything. That's the upside down kingdom. And that's what this night is all about. The world says that the people we're going to serve this night, sadly, tragically, the world says, the people we're going to serve may not be worth much. They certainly aren't treated like they're worth the value that they really have. But we want to change that that night, for sure, at least that night. And hopefully, through that, they will understand the value that they truly do have, not just in our eyes, but certainly in God's eyes. So, um... You heard Tim, he stole all the thunder, which he should, rightly so, to his foundation and all. But the um, Night to Shine is all about just showing God's love. We want God to receive all of the glory for anything that happens to this event. It's all about showing his love to people with special needs who are 14 years old and older. Um, that just tells a lot more about everything that will go on. You're going to hear a lot more than that about um, all of that in just a little bit. Um, he gave some of the stats, but these are updated for what happened last year. And then um, you can see that already in 2019, it's going to be serving in over 700 locations. So that's pretty, pretty cool. Um, we're going to jump right into some of the um, specifics. And I will ask that if you have any questions, we're going to have a Q&A um, at the end. So please hang on to those because you may have some of the same questions that other people have that 
Um, and I'm short of breath today, so I apologize for that. I want to do my best not to give you an earful of air along the way. Um, but we do ask that um, you check in between 4.30 and 5.30. We're going to have about 600 volunteers to get checked in by 5.30 before our guests starting arrive. So we really need you to come in and get checked in. And that arrival will happen. We're going to have a map to show you here in a little bit, too, to get that visual. I'm a very visual learner. So <laughs> we will have a map in just a little bit. But you will arrive if you are a registered non-buddy volunteer you will arrive at the canopy just like you did tonight and there will be a tent out there for you to check in and receive your name tag your name tag will be your pass to all of the events that we have without that pass we will not allow people into any of our events we are trying to be as strict about that as possible our primary concern is the safety of our kings and queens um, bottom line we want them to have fun too obviously <laughs> but in order to do so we have to keep them safe so um if you do not if you're registered you check in you have your name tag we take care of you there for non-buddies so anyone else who's who is a buddy we'll get to you in just a second um yeah so from there you'll be directed how to get to your team leader i don't know why i keep looking at that thing that's just old school sorry i'm old that's what i do um, anyway, you'll meet up with your team leader and you'll get to your location and they'll give you more instructions from there. You might be asking, I signed up for possibility of three different things. How do I know what team we're going to be on? That's a process with this many people. <laughs> so as we go along, you will be getting email notification of that because we have to kind of see where we are on the different teams and tweak that. And so we will be emailing you as we assign you to different teams. Okay. Um, and then as you're assigned to different teams, then you will be getting um, updates from most, most of you will be getting updates from different team leaders. Otherwise, when you get your assignment, you just show up and you'll get your instructions that night. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, already said that. Volunteer parking is going to be as far away <laughs> for you guys as we can because we want to reserve the closest parking for our guests and for their caregivers. Uh, volunteer is higher. If you are a buddy, you want to dress up because you're going to be accompanying your, um, your king or queen for the evening. So that can be anything from, you know, uh, for those who still wear dresses to worship, to um, Bible, Bible um, to Sunday school or whatever. Uh, then, you know, like worship dress or whatever, or nice slacks for the ladies or whatever, all the way up to formal wear. We have a huge span of it. There. Now, for the kings and queens, we've seen everything from t-shirts and, and jeans to formal wear, and that's completely all right. We don't want them to worry about that at all. We don't, you know, we don't want that to be a prohibitor for them at all, but we want them to feel special um, because you're going to be accompanying them. So for the uh, food prep crew, for the food um, service crew, they will be in food service clothing, so they'll be like black slacks. And, or black jeans at least, and white top, just like you would see at food service anywhere. And then for everyone else, um, you can have a Night to Shine t-shirt or just a black t-shirt and jeans or whatever, similar to this. We'll talk more about t-shirts in just a little bit. Big breath. Maybe you guys can do that with me. Between every slide, we can take a deep breath together. Maybe that would work. <laughs> okay. Um, we already talked about that, the access to the event. Your name tag is your access to the event. Um, all volunteers will be credentialed. Uh, we have a lot of questions each year about background checks. If you are a teacher, if you are a um, firefighter, if you are a, if you're credentialed basically for safety and security in any way, most likely we can accept that background check and we would love to be able to do so because that means we can use those funds in other ways. So please check with us. We're able to take a picture of that and accept that. Otherwise, we're happy to, to run a check ourselves. We have a service we use here at West Ark, and we're happy to do that. Um, when you register, which most of you have already done, I guess there should have been a link uh, in your confirmation email for that. If that process messed up for you, that you see the link to that right there. Um, if you have friends who have questions about that, as many have, Please refer them to the link or refer them to us. 
if at any point, I don't think, I think I failed to mention this the other day, but we do have a website, I mean, a, an email address for Night to Shine. It's simply NTS, Night to Shine, at westark.org. That, that takes it to myself and to Jordan and to Meredith Brown and to Abby, um, my daughter, who, by the way, is my right-hand man girl, <laughs> who person, who has just been amazing to help me. She goes to school in Searcy, but she helps from there, too, and um, she just has been amazing to help me, too, and I'm just grateful, and I'm a little biased, but that's okay. Um, yeah, simple things. Please don't leave before you tell your team leader, and certainly don't leave your buddy um, before you get them connected with their caregiver. Um, emergency and exit plan is basically we look to our security team to show us uh, should there be an emergency team, they will direct us in that. We have an emergency team here, or a, a security team here at West Ark, and then we will have uh, uni both uniformed and uh, plainclothes officers um, security team off security team personnel um, also on staff that night. So should there be an emergency, we will look to them to guide us in that situation. We do ask that we will have food for volunteers here that night, certainly for the buddies um, who will be there. However, you're busy. <laughs> so we do suggest that you eat something before you come just because you're going to be busy. And so... Um, just keep that in mind. And most importantly, we do ask that you pray for this event um, because that's the most important thing we could need all the way around. So it's time for our deep breath. I'm going to get a drink while we're at it. Any questions um, at this point? Two slides in. All right. Well, let's keep going then. This is what it takes. These are the teams that it takes to put this night on. Um, it's a big group effort. It really, really is. And we're, that's why we are so grateful for each one of you who is here. We want to introduce you to all the team leaders that you'll be working with. We have um, the, the team leaders for the kings and queens and then also for the um, volunteers. So these ladies both, you'll, these are the, well, some of the first faces that you'll be seeing when you check in. Uh, we have Rochelle Pratt on the top and then uh, Rindy Edwards on the bottom, who will be helping with check-in when you get here and getting you to wherever you need to be to get all checked in and directing you to um, the place where you need to be. <coughs> and then we also will have the coat check area again to where um, volunteers and buddies can check their items. Um, you will have, everyone will have an ID number on your tag, which can be matched to your items. Um, so these fine folks, Brian and Shelley Robbins, and then Rochelle Brown will be taking care of that for us. Security and parking, Jeff Pointer, who's right up here. He's part of the Alma Police Department. <coughs> Excuse me. Did I say that wrong? Okay, great. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, there's a big long list of what they do, but they keep us safe. <laughs> they keep us safe and they take care of um, traffic and security. And this place is a big place. There are lots of doors to monitor. There are lots of entrances and exits and all of that. And we're just incredibly grateful um, for all that they do to keep us safe. One of the biggies is going to be um, monitoring who has access, you know, because we just like I said, safety is key because these, these guests that we have are not always able to take care of themselves in that way. And so we all need to keep an eye out for them. Ron Hamilton, also up here, is our transportation team leader, and he does a great job every year getting together our limos and our special transportation also for those who might want or need transportation from the long distance that we ask you to park. Um, up to the check-in area. So we're very grateful for him and his team. Food service prep um, and service is for Linda Davis. And I have to tell you, I just love this story. I wish to goodness I could remember how this all happened. But last year, um, somehow, the food service director at the Sebastian County Detention Service um, her name is Simone Johnson, Miss Simone Johnson, and she is quite the character, let me tell you. But she heard about Night to Shine and decided 
but it was her last mission to be a part of it. And so she has teamed with Ms. Linda, and not only is she in Aramark, who is the vendor that they use at the Sebastian County Detention Center, not only are they working together, but some of the inmates actually prepare some of the food, which I just think is the coolest thing ever because they, the inmates, are incredibly moved that they are able to be a part of this night too. And I just think, only God could do that. I mean, <laughs> truly, only God could do that. So it's just a pretty neat thing. Uh, but they do a great job of just preparing all of the food and getting it to our guests, and, um, and we're very grateful for them. Dewan Cogswell and her team do a magnificent job of transforming this space into a pretty magical space uh, for the entire evening. And we are really, I put on here, um, feel like the kings and queens that they truly are in the eyes of God, because that's exactly what we want them to feel like when they are here. Kim Bice and her team will love on the parents and the caregivers upstairs. Um, we know that a lot of the caregivers who come, especially the moms and dads or whoever ends up being the caregivers, um, this is a 24-7 proposition for them. They don't get breaks very often at all. So we want this to be a time when they can just have some respite. Would they plan some special activities for them? They have food for them too. And we want to just be able to love on them and minister to them however we can. So Kim and her team take really good care of them. Karen Pointer and her team take really good care to and point over here. It's really both areas, but for some reason I focus. Actually, that is the guys, isn't it? Whatever. Anyway, she, she does a great job of making sure that each king and queen have not only a corsage or boutonniere, but they also have a tiara or crown. And that is a big deal to each king and queen. She also does a great job every year of making sure that they are presented in a way that makes it very special. So the ladies often, almost always, have some type of pageant queen um, who will come and present that, that tiara to them. And the gentlemen often will have some type of military um, present that to them. And it is really, really special to see that. Those pictures are some of my favorite always. So, Okay, time for a deep breath. All right, no idea what's going on with that, but it's kind of annoying. Okay, Blue Crew. <laughs> this is something new this year. We got some feedback um, that there are often times that we look around, we have a question, we don't know who to ask. So we're going to have a crew of 10, probably 10 to 12 people who at any time, especially, you know, at the beginning will be placed in here in the foyer mostly, and as the event progresses, you know, the Blue Crew will progress as well. But at any time, you should be able to look around and see someone in a blue shirt who will be trained to answer your questions. Um, it, some of the crew will be myself and Jordan and Meredith and Christina. I saw her earlier. There we go. And Abby, um, Miss Phyllis, too. Uh, but we will be trained to do our best to answer whatever questions you have. And so hopefully that will cut down on some of that frustration, hopefully. Um, and like I said, we'll kind of travel as the... Um, evening progresses as well. Hair and makeup and shoe shine teams, we have Lindsay Allen and Dave Cogswell who will be taking care of that. And this is just, again, to help our kings and queens feel as special as they possibly can. Um, they, they have a whole plethora of ladies and, and gentlemen who take care of our, our ladies over here. And then um, the guys take care of our, our gentlemen over here too. And, and it's just so cool. They end up with a whole barber shop almost over here. It's just a pretty neat thing. So we're grateful for them as well. Our red carpet and paparazzi team is led by Cade Rich Richard, one of our campus ministers. And uh, this is literally the red carpet experience. When they get off the limo, they are met by a red carpet and they are announced by name and they are cheered and there are cameras and there are um, TV and camera to interview them and just see how their night is going and it is just a huge special experience. We do understand that there are some who can't handle that, that much of a special experience so we try to keep that in mind as well. Um, but again, just anything and everything that we can do to make that as special for them as possible. Um, we do have another change here. We're going to have two karaoke um, rooms this year. We're doing everything in our power to spread people out because the gym got kind of crazy last year. <laughs> we'll talk more about that in a little bit, too. Um, but one of the ways we're trying to do that is just two karaoke rooms. 
So our two leaders for that are Brent Evans, who's back for his third year, and then we're adding Steve Allen as another leader for that. Our sensory room will be back again. This is just a room um, led by Mandy Chilton and her crew. Mandy's an occupational therapist, and I believe she brings pretty much her whole clinic <laughs> to create just a nice, calming um, experience for those who might need a little bit of a break. Um, I'm very tempted to go in there myself at some points in the night, but it's not for us, just so you know. But, um, but it is a wonderful experience um, for those who just need a little bit of a break. So we know that that's a huge blessing to those who need that. Todd Harris, um, who's EMT and a firefighter, is um, lead of our medical and safety team. Um, so he will be what's also part of our red team. Our safety team is a combination of medical and security. So another, some of the other feedback we got was that when we have a medical or a security um, issue, we're not sure who to go to for that. So, you know, when I talked about the blue crew before for questions, we're going to have the red crew, but if you have a medical or safety issue, again, 10 people that should be in eyes view whenever you see them, those are the people to go to, okay? So, and now, they could be medical or security, but they're going to they're gonna be able to help you one way or the other, okay? So, if they're not if there's security, they're still going to know who to go to for that. You'll still be better off than you were to begin with, okay? <laughs> I promise. All right, does that make sense? Okay, deep breath. It's good for all of us, I promise. Yeah, okay. All right, videography. We have a very talented um, videographer who will be doing all our videography this year named Caleb Rudder. And um, he will just, you'll see him all around taking pictures and getting all those uh, short footage to, um, we'll see his work actually at the end of our session here. Um, we'll see his work from last year. So, And then we have Miss Rachel Knoll, who's right here. And she's going to be taking, um, she'll be leading the team, taking our portraits um, back here of our kings and queens. And they will, it's, it's pretty amazing that we're able to, by the end of the night, send those portraits home um, with our kings and queens. So, Lord willing, with that process, that will happen. <laughs> we know it will. And then Mike Burke, I saw him earlier too, he will be leading our candid photography team, which is also very important because we'll get all of those amazing shots that we get to share on social media, and they're just so fun, and they, some of those um, may end up in our videography as well, you know, but they just capture those amazing moments throughout the night um, of all the fun that's going on. And then we have Kim Lee Wallen, who will be heading up our buddy team, which is a hugely important team, which... We'll start at the very beginning of matching our buddies to our kings and queens. And so um, we've changed some things up with that as well. We were just talking about some of those changes. Um, so we're very grateful for her and her team. And then the teardown team is all of us, all who can stay. It is truly amazing. Dewan and her team spend a good three to four days, well, months planning, days putting everything up. And then literally, I think last year, everything was down two hours. When everybody puts it together, when everybody comes together, two hours. So um, that's the goal. Once again, we could beat it. Let's go from 1 to 45. Let's go from 1 to 45 this year. <laughs> Do what? We need another scaffold. Okay. All right. We need another scaffold. All right. So those are the team leaders. Now, who in here has signed up to be a buddy? Oh, awesome. Several. All right. Who was a buddy last year? Oh, was that everybody whose hand just went up? Do we have any new buddies? Okay, perfect. All right, so I'm going to quickly go over some of this. We have a lot of information about buddies because it is a, all jobs are important in Night to Shine, okay? Um, but buddies are the ones who are going with our kings and queens, with our guests, every step of the way through the evening. So we want to make sure that you have information to make your job as easy as it can be um, and for you to understand the importance of it, I guess, or whatever. So um, we will also be sending some of this information to you later on just so you can have it in front of you um, because we realize that not everyone has worked with people with special needs before, for one thing. So we don't want that to be intimidating to you, but we also want you to have some information. So with that being said, I'm going to read some of this. I know you can read. 
but I'm also just going to skip through some of it as well. So one of the most important things we can say to you, and some of this is going to seem like common sense, but we feel the need to say it anyway, okay? Please don't ever, ever, ever leave your buddy alone. Um, some of them are more high-functioning than others, but oftentimes it's very hard to judge that, okay? So we don't want to assume that they're more high-functioning than they are and, and think, think that they may be safe when they're not. So please don't ever just... Just assume that we need to be with them all of the time. At the same time, we want to be respectful of their space, you know, so that's a hard balance. If you have any medical issues, no matter how minor, please notify the team leader. We already talked about the medical team. Um, and they will, they will come and help, and they're really good about that. Um, it talks about how to reconnect your king or queen with their caregiver. At the end of the evening, we're all going to come back to the auditorium. Um, we started that last year. That worked a whole lot better <laughs> than the first year. Um, it still is a, is a little messy, but we will dismiss by the ID number, so that does make it much easier. Um, but it is still one of your very important jobs to make sure that that king or queen gets connected back with their caregiver. So that's a really important thing. Um, so we please do not leave until that happens. And if you have trouble with that, please seek one of us to help you with that. Um, for guests with severe special needs, know that their parent or caretaker may come along with you the whole night, and that's okay. That's certainly their prerogative, um, and that would be very helpful to you, too. Just know that. <laughs> Please don't be insulted by that, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, it's a good idea to ask several times if your buddy might need to go to the restroom. For one thing, they might not know where they are. We understand you might not know where they are either. We'll get to that in a second, <laughs> but um, another reason for the Blue Crew uh, and other team leaders, but um, it's just a good idea. Again, just don't assume, um, but always, always, always be respectful, and we'll, we'll talk about language and that sort of thing in just a second. At the same time, for restroom bakes, breaks, understand that it's not your responsibility to take them to the restroom, and there are several reasons for this. One is um, either they're able to go by themselves, and that'll be pretty obvious, or their caretaker will come and take them, okay? If they're severe, that's, that's going to be pretty obvious. Um, or medical can come and help, okay? But it is not your responsibi responsibility to take them. Things can happen. We don't want them, but we don't want any resemblance of anything happening, okay? So just know that that is not your responsibility. If you have any question or any hesitation in that at all, I would suggest you just go get medical and let them take care of it. Okay? Um, if you'd like to stay in touch with your guest after the event, we encourage that, but we insist and we highly, no, we insist, that you talk to the caregiver first. We have to um, assume that the intellectual age of our kings and queens may not be their actual age, okay? I don't mean that unkindly, that's just fact. And so we need to go back to the caregiver for that permission, at least to give them the opportunity to talk to them as well, okay? We need to be very aware of food restrictions and diets, and that's part of the information that we are gathering um, on the front end, and we are sharing that, of course, with our food prep crew, and they have that information, and we will have that on the back of the Kings and Queens name tags. So when you first get paired up, I would suggest that you very respectfully ask, may I look on the back of your name tag, please? And you see that information. And then you might ask again before you go eat, just to have that information. I would say probably 75 to 80% have no restrictions whatsoever. And we're trying to be proactive. Huh? Many need things chopped up just for better handling. We're trying to be proactive on the front end, too, by having very easy foods to eat, you know? But, um, but it's a good thing to try to, to look at that and be proactive yourself. Um, just to cut down on frustration, if no, nothing else. 
but we certainly don't want to make it harder for them to eat and then have them be frustrated as well. Um, but there are also, you know, we know all of the restrictions that can be there, so just check that out to begin with. And then, if you, again, if you have any questions, please talk to the food prep team or medical either way. Um, wheelchair and limited mobility uh, tips. If someone is, is in a wheelchair and they, oops, if they're completely in a wheelchair and they're independent in the wheelchair, please always ask if they want any help because if they're independent and using that wheelchair, most likely they don't want help. <laughs> Just like I don't want help if I'm walking by myself, <laughs> you know, or you wouldn't either. Um, uh, this is some common sense stuff too, but be careful in crowded hallways, allow time for ex extra time for transition, um, especially for some of our older guests, or not even necessarily, you know, some of ours are just kind of feeble. They're going to be a little feeble. They're going to be a little wobbly or whatever. Ask first, but just ask if you may take their arm. It's a special night, so you can get away with that a little bit more. You're, you're kind of their, I don't want to use the term escort, but their, their date, we'll talk about that a little bit too. But you're their special person tonight. <laughs> so you can kind of get away with that anyway, with kind of hooking the arm or whatever. Um, but that's also for stability. It'll give you a little bit more stability. Um, if, if you're talking a little bit longer and you have someone in a chair, then it's very respectful to get down on their level, similarly to that you would for a child. You know, you don't want to be talking down to anyone ever. Um, so that's just another kind of respectful do what you would do to someone else. This is kind of a biggie with me. Um, some might even call it a pet peeve, but you, there will be no zapping or anything like that. But this is called people first language. So um, we have a son with autism. And again, I'm kind of biased. He's pretty awesome. His name's Adam. And Adam um, has brown hair. I gave him brown eyes the other night. That's a lie. He has hazel eyes. I don't know what I was thinking. Hazel eyes. He is a history buff, and he also happens to have autism. Adam is not autistic. Okay, he is. Factually, he is autistic, but that's not all he is. You see the difference? Um, so it, the same goes for Down syndrome, for um, cerebral palsy, you know, whatever. The, the, the whole focus is on the person first. So that, that's just it. I mean, we want the, the focus on the person first and that whatever their diagnosis may be, that's just one thing about them. That's just one. Um, because while autism is a big thing in our life, it's just one. It's just one. Does that make sense? Okay. Sorry about all that. Um, some of these terms have been around for a while and understand um, it's kind of hard to get out of some of those habits or whatever, but just be aware. And again, there's not going to be a zapper. It's not going to be something coming down from the sky, promise, but it's just something to be aware of, um, maybe a habit to try to change. Thankfully, most of them are going away. So, <laughs> um, And again, especially for those who are buddies, we'll be sending out some of this for you so you don't have to remember. And we certainly don't want this to be something to be like, I can't remember, I can't remember, please don't do that. <laughs> it's just something to be aware of, something to think about. Oh, this was going to explain a little bit more. Instead of disabled persons, they're a person with disabilities. Instead of special needs person, a person with special needs, on and on. Instead of autistic person, a person with autism. Again, it's just one part of that person, not the whole person. Okay. When offering assistance to a person with disability, wait until um, your help is accepted and then ask how you can best assist. Um, I think it's always a good idea to act, even if it's like so obvious that help is needed, <laughs> like completely obvious, to go ahead and ask. Um, because that's just a people respect kind of thing, you know? Um, and especially, I would say, too, of being the mom of someone like that, uh, if the caregiver is present, too, I hadn't really thought about that until just now, if the caregiver is present, talk to the, uh, we actually heard this feedback from, I just remembered, from some of our caregivers, talk to 
if the caregiver's present, try very hard to remember to talk to the uh, king or queen first instead of the caregiver. Um, I know that's hard, but, but try, because that's showing respect to that person as well. If you, you, they may be nonverbal, they may not be able to respond, but at least try. And then if you don't get a response, then you can try to, to go to the caregiver. Address them just as you would with any other person. Offer a handshake, even if they have limited mobility. At least offer. You know, you're showing that respect as well. Um, we're not going to talk to them like kids. That's tempting. It really is. But, let, but we're going to try not to. Um, and if the interpreter is present, try to talk to the person, not the interpreter. Um, I'm not going to lean on the wheelchair. You can read this stuff. All right. Uncomfortable situations. They happen. They don't happen too often here. We haven't had too many of them. But please don't be afraid to ask for help. If something happens, we would much, much, much rather you ask for help than to get even deeper and deeper and, and not know what to do or not be able to get out. So please ask for help. And again, you'll have blue crew to look for. You'll have red people, to, red crew to look for. Or you'll have any team lever, leaders to look for. Um, overstimulation does happen. Uh, there's a lot of fun stuff going on. There'll be lights, there'll be music, there'll be people galore, and it's all well and good, but it can be too much. <laughs> and so if you're not familiar with overstimulation, what it looks like, we are at our house. Um, but that can be yelling, that can be screaming, that can be crying, that can be extreme fidgeting, that can be fearful looks or aggressive behavior. It looks like oftentimes a fit. It looks like a behavioral fit. Um, but it often is someone's only way of saying, I can't do this anymore. But they're beyond the way, they're beyond, they are beyond using words at that point. So if you see that, that, may, that very well could be overstimulation. So if you are able to get them to the sensory room, they, that's your best option because they are more than able to take care of that. Um, if you are not, then we can look for one of our red shirts to be able to help you get the person to safely to that area or to any of the other leaders and we're able to help. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, obviously, we want to maintain our composure and speak kindly at all times. Um, and we talked about otherwise we never ever want to go off alone um, with any guests at any time. I can't emphasize that enough. This is a big place. We're going to be using almost every square inch of it, but there should never, ever be any time for any of us to ever be alone with any guests, ever. Ever. I don't, I don't know how else to say it, um, but we should never have that situation. There, there's just no need for it. So, And that's for your safety as much as the guests, by the way. So... Okay, big deep breath and drink time. Sorry, guys, goodness. Any questions? Okay. Oh. Okay, I said Q&A at the end, but because of my deep breaths, I guess I'll just do it in between. You have to have enough patience to wait for that answer. And if you talk all day long, it doesn't, it's not going to get heard anymore. <laughs> That's a very good point. I don't know if you can hear all that. We will need to show patience for responses because many of our kings and queens will um, need more time to respond to our questions or, or to whatever we'd be saying. And volume on our part is not going to help in the response time. <laughs> That's a very valid point. That doesn't work at my house either, I'm ashamed to say. So, <laughs> okay. Now, uh, we do recommend um, when you get here to check in, if at all possible, that you allow yourself time to walk through the whole event space to get yourself familiar um, with the whole event space, especially if you're a buddy, uh, because that's going to give you the time to um, see everywhere you're going. Uh, we do recommend that you wear comfortable shoes. Now, ladies, especially if you're a buddy, I know that that's a little bit contradictory, but it can be, it can be done. 
uh, but it's, it's a big place. There's a lot going on. It's three hours, so we do recommend that if at all possible. Um, we do ask you to be aware that some of your kings and queens will see you as a boyfriend and girlfriend. We know that's not the case. You know that's not the case. But we do ask because of that that you be very careful in what you wear, especially ladies. We also understand that it is difficult sometimes to find modest clothing, but it is out there, so please use it. Um, please give very clear clues that you are just friends. Um, and we do ask that you, play, you please stay just in the designated areas and don't roam around. Um, we already talked about uncomfortable situations. If there's anything that comes up, we would much rather you ask than not ask. Or if you're uncomfortable about something, then to please come to us and not come to us. Um, regardless of your volunteer position, please feel free uh, to step in and help if something comes up. Um, we would much rather stop whatever we're doing to come and help than not. <laughs> um, that's what we're here for. We want to help with whatever, whatever you guys need. So um, we already talked about dress, so we don't need to do that again. And, of course, your smile is most important. So, All right. We talked about emergencies already. We talked about medical personnel. Oh, the last point there is important. If you are asked in any way, shape, or form by your um, caregiver, should never be asking you this, but if they do or if your kings and queens do, for any medication of any kind, baby aspirin to whatever, we don't do that. We go back to caregivers or they just don't get it during the time they're here, but we do not administer any medication of any kind, sort, or variety, period. All right, here we go. This girl's challenged in maps and directions, but we're hoping this will help. Okay, so you, we are, uh-oh, anybody see the, um, that's not me. Jordan, is that you? Okay, that's Jordan. This is going to be fun. All right. So we are here. What? Oh, yay. Oh, yay. Oh, yeah. There we go. Okay. Uh, sure. All right. So, all right. So we are right here. No, we don't. I'm lying to you. Right now, we're right in here. But when you came in, we are, you came in right here at the canopy, and then you came in the main entrance right here, which is what you're going to do that night. See how it says main entrance and registered non-buddy volunteer. But if you're a buddy, where do I go? We're going to talk about that in a minute. But, um, okay, so basics of where everybody will go. Non-buddies come in here if we have some, which we will, have some non-registered kings and queens they're going to check in here at our new coffee bar which will be completed on promise um, by that time and then everyone will come into the well the um, buddies and kings and queens will come in to the auditorium and we'll get into the graph the uh, specifics of that in just a second when you non-buddy volunteer check in when you <laughs> let me try that again when the non-buddy volunteers check in, you will be dispersed to your different places, okay? So if you're coat check, you'll come here. If you're karaoke, you'll go either here or here. If you're food prep, you will come to our gym right here. If you're dancing, this is new. Well, you're not dancing. Never mind. But this is new. We have moved dancing out to a 40 by 40 heated tent on our parking lot out of sheer necessity of space. <laughs> we have never done this before. It's going to be basically in this area right here. Um, yeah, right there. Go try it. That's all we know to do because last year it was just insane in the gym. <laughs> That's all there was to it. So the gym will be for dinner space only. It's going to be able to spread out in there and have a nice, calm, I think a 
it's going to be kind of like sensory room two, actually, in there. Going to have some low music, um, dinner in there, and then the dancing will be out there. So, um, basically, when they get on their, well, we're going to go over some of that, but basically, when they get on off the limo, they will have the choice of karaoke, dancing, or dinner, okay? But we're going to, we'll go over the whole auditorium thing in here in just a second, too. Um, but then on the second floor, the only thing happening on the second floor is the caregiver care, the care for the caregivers. There we go. Um, we do have our brand new restrooms right here. We also have a beautiful new uh, handicap restroom right here with a an adult changing station. So that also will be very helpful that night as well. Uh, our sensory room will be located right here. Most likely our med center will be right here. I don't think they really even use that much because they're on the run most of the time, but that can be just sort of a center spot for them. Um, yeah, so that's basically it for that. Now, the auditorium. Okay. Man, so many arrows, so many arrows. Okay, the buddies, as you can see in green, come down the center aisle. They get matched. We are working on zoning the area for pre-matched buddies and kings and queens and post-matched kings and queens and buddies <laughs> because that was an issue too. Um, we have a lot of, you know, it's a lot going on in this space. So we're working through that process as well. But most likely when you buddies come in, you will be in this area pre-matching stage. This sounds like metamorphosis or something. But anyway, pre-matching stage, you will be here. Kim and her team will get you matched. And then when you're matched to your queens, you'll be in here. When you get matched to your king, you'll be back here. And then when it's, and we'll have an MC as well. I believe Mark is going to help keep us updated as to what's going on. I think that we needed that too last year. We learned that. And so when it's time to move on and get through all of these steps, you'll be notified with that. Um, and the same for the ladies. So when you get matched out and it's time to move on, obviously you move through the stages of shoe shine, floral, crown, all of that. Um, and then when you go through, let's say for the ladies, you have your hair, makeup, floral, crown, photo, then you can go right out this door. And as you saw on the map while ago, we have a karaoke room right back there. We highly recommend you use it because that's gonna help with our spreading people out plan. <laughs> Um, you also have this, the option of getting on a limo right out that, that sidewalk, right out that door. The gentleman can get out a limo right out this door. Um, again, we're trying to spread people out as much as possible. Um, one of the things that we're really going to try, especially one of the keys to this, and I need to talk to our food service folks more, <coughs> pardon me, is that when they are in their dining section is, and they seem to be kind of wrapping it up, you know, is, oh, wow, you guys look like you might be ready for some karaoke, <laughs> you know, and just kind of move it on, move it on, or you guys look like you're ready for the dance floor. Getting them off the dance floor, I have a feeling is going to be one of our biggest challenges, you know. So um, we might have to have our um, bouncers or something for that. I don't know. Anyway. But, um, but the more you guys can help with that, especially buddies, I think you're going to be key in this process is to help us keep moving. We don't want to keep anyone from any activity. We just want to keep moving from activity to activity. And I know as it's coming out of my mouth, that's easier said than done. I get it. <laughs> um, but we also don't need the bottleneck that we had because that's not fun for anyone else either. So. Um, but, so that's what we're planning. 
Yes. So we do um, suggest and encourage that the non-Betty volunteers take a t five to ten minute break, look around, see what's going on, because we did hear a lot of feedback too. It was like, I was kind of stuck. I never got to see anything else that was going on. So we really do encourage that. We just encourage you to come back. <laughs> come back and do your job. Um, and there are a lot of jobs that once you, like especially hair and makeup and things like that, that once you're done, you, and many of you signed up to do something else, and that's great. Um, we do need you to go and actually do that other job, please, especially paparazzi. We can never have enough people in paparazzi. That's the thing. And there were often times that we had, we didn't have enough, and so we'd have to go recruit, you know. So please always go check that out first um, because we could have, 300 out there and it would be fine it would be great um so okay um sweet okay i did want to update you on numbers last year we had just shy of 300 kings and queens just shy of 600 volunteers um, I'm sorry, and caregivers on top of that. So it was right at a thousand people. This year so far, as of just before this meeting, we have 243 volunteers, 138 kings and queens, 65 of, we, of which are buddies. All of those numbers, well, the top two numbers anyway, are up from this time last year, which is great. We still need to keep spreading the word, okay? So anytime you can, anytime you see us sharing stuff, please share it too. Um, I say that in faith because <laughs> I know that the panic button's gonna, pan panic button's gonna hit um, here in just a little bit too, but um, we are grateful. We are just so grateful for each one of you who is here and who is committed to making this night so special for these incredibly, incredibly special people. And I use that special word, I, I just don't have another one for it because we have one in our home. And um, I believe that, um, I, I didn't share this, but in my former life I was a speech language pathologist and so I've worked with kiddos with special needs and God has just always placed um, folks with special needs on my heart. And so this has always been um, something that's in my heart, and I believe God's placed it there. And now when this is opportunity has come up, it's just, you know, I, Jordan and Meredith brought this to us uh, three years ago, and we were just thrilled. And we're thrilled still to be able to be a part of it and now see what God has done, and we are just incredibly grateful. And it's because of you guys that it happens. And